in today's class we will be discussing decision making and branching constructions okay, why we go for decision making or when actually we are going for decision making and branching constructions so if you come across a situation where you want to execute some set of statements based on the result of some condition what you are testing okay so you are going to test some condition based on the result of that you want to execute some set of statements if it is evaluated to true so if it evaluates to false then you want to execute some other set of statements so this is how you can control the flow of execution by using one of the constructs supported in c that is decision making and branching constructs in c so there are the different decision making and branching constructs supported so if you are uh, if construct there are different forms of if construct that we'll be discussing in today's class a switch construct you are having there is go to statement so these are few decision making and branching constructs supported in c okay so what we have uh, we are going to uh, discuss in today's classes different forms of if conditions so once that is done then we'll be discussing the first program of your lab syllabus that is to find the roots of quadratic equation coming to the if statement so i already mentioned what for we are using decision making and branching construct as the name itself indicate we are going to first test some condition based on that we are going to decide which set of statements are to be executed so at this point branching takes place that means the control gets transferred to some set of statements that will be executed after completion where actually the control will be transferred to that we will see with different forms of if statement okay the following are the different forms of if statement one you are having it is simple if statement if else statement nested if else statement else if ladder statement so these are the different forms of if statement so what are the different forms of if statement you find or you can construct it is simple if if else nested if else and else if ladder okay and remember this is the second unit topic what we are covering uh, since uh, your first lab syllabus program is with respect to else if ladder construct this is the last form of if construct which we will be discussing on this you are having one lab syllabus program okay so uh, before that you should know or you should be aware of different forms of if which you can use for decision making and branching once you are uh, once you are aware of this uh, you will come to know if any problem is given which form will be more suitable uh, for implementation that you can decide if you are aware of these different forms of if statement okay to the first form of if statement that is simple if statement this is the general syntax and in these lines i'll be explaining each and every form of if we'll first see the general form of that particular uh, uh, if construct then we'll see the flow chart and we'll uh, i'll try to explain how actually that particular form of if works okay with example we'll be discussing coming to the general form of if statement this is what the syntax we are going to use we'll write the keyword if it is if it is one of the keyword in c so in uh, c programming language there are totally 32 keywords supported in ansi c okay out of which if is also one of the keyword so whenever you want to test some condition we'll be making use of if statement okay and what is the syntax of writing if condition we are going to use the keyword if within common parenthesis you can observe the condition what you want to test it has to be specified within pair of common parenthesis okay and after that you will be specifying opening parenthesis flower brace then you will be writing the true block statements it may be one statement or multi line statements you are going to write so whatever the statements you want to execute uh, once the condition is true so those statements you are going to write within this pair of flower brace and you are going to uh, after completion of this execution will be writing uh, the next statements after the if block okay since it is a pair of flower brace we are using we call it as a block so once the if block uh, execution is completed we are going to execute some other statements after the if block okay so this is the syntax of simple if statement so it is you can call it also call this as one way branching so we are testing the condition if this condition is satisfied or if it evaluates to true then only the statements what you give within pair of flower brace that will be executed if the condition what you are testing is a failure in that case it will skip the statements whatever you have given within pair of flower brace and control will be transferred to the next statement after the if block 
Okay, this is how simple if statement will work. So what are the keywords you're using in simple if? It is uh, if the keyword you're using, okay? And how to specify the condition, whatever you want to test, you're going to use common parenthesis. Within that, you're going to write the condition. So what actually you're going to write within common parenthesis is some expression you're going to write. It may be including some relational operators or relational and logical operators uh, to maybe to compare two numbers, maybe less than, greater than, equal to, not equal to. Few relational operators or in combination uh, to relational, you may use logical operators. Uh, whenever you want to test compound conditions, you'll be making use of relational and logical expressions within this uh, common parenthesis. Okay, that is what you're going to write. So whatever the condition you write, within parenthesis or whatever the expression you write within parenthesis that is tested first so how if works simple if works first test the condition if that condition evaluates to true then control will enter the if block and it executes the statements whatever you are going to write in this uh, that is within pair of flags if the condition what you are testing is a fail where the control gets transferred to it will skip the statements see how actually the control, uh, the flow of execution is, it is not sequential execution. So whether to execute the true block statements or not, it depends on what condition you are testing. If it is a failure, whatever the condition you are testing, control will not enter the true block statements. Instead, control gets transferred to the next statement after the if block. And one more thing, it is not compulsory to use flower brace here. If it were to be single line statement you are executing, if the condition what you are testing is satisfied if the test condition is true and if only one statement is to be executed within this if block you need not use parenthesis okay when actually we go for parenthesis it is a good programming practice whether it is single line statement or multi-line statement you want to execute if you are if you are using parenthesis that is fine but you should not commit any mistake while parenthesizing the statements okay so if it were to be multi-line statements to be executed, if the condition is satisfied, we can go for a pair of flower base, opening and closing parenthesis to indicate the block, which is to be executed upon satisfaction of this condition. But if, uh, if it were to be only one statement to be executed upon satisfaction of the condition, then you can skip this opening and closing flower base. Okay, so true block statement, if, it, if the condition is not satis uh, it is not specified at all, then simply the whatever the statements you write in the program will be executed. But here, this is the one of the form of if what we are discussing, simple if statement. So some set of statements we are going to execute only if that condition what we are testing is satisfied. Okay. This is how simple if works. You can see the flowchart on the right hand side of the slide. See, we have used rhombus. You know, rhombus symbol is used to test the condition. If this test condition evaluates to true, see, true block statement is executed. So after completion of true block statement, the next statement after the if block will be executed. But if the condition what you are testing is a failure, then simply the control gets transferred to the next statement after the if block. This is where control will be transferred to. So you can use the circle and you can specify the continuation. If you are writing like this, this is also fine. Okay. So this is about simple if statement. One so this is what I've explained here. If is the keyword in C and how actually if a simple if statement works, if the test condition evaluates to true, then true block statement is executed. Otherwise, true block statement is skipped and statement X, which is outside the if block, that will be executed. So both true block statements and statement X are executed in sequence if the test condition is evaluated to true, correct? So if you're testing the condition and if it evaluates to true, true block statements will be executed. After the execution of true block, where the control will be transferred to, it is to the immediate next statement after the if condition. So both will be executed if the condition evaluates to true. But if it were to be a failure, it skips the true block statement and control will be transferred to the next statement outside the if block. So this is about simple if statement. We'll see one example on this hash include stdivo.h int main and uh, these are the variables I have declared of integer type int marks and awards. So I want to update the marks scored by a student if he has won some awards. Okay, if the number of awards one is greater than zero, I want to update the mark by some value. Otherwise, I don't want to update. I'll simply 
display the marks scored by the student. So this is what the example I have considered here for simple if. Okay. So first, what we are doing, we are uh, declaring two variables of integer type. One is to hold the marks scored by the student. Other one is uh, to hold the number of awards won by the student. Both are integer type. Then we are displaying the message to the user. So since we need to read the input through the keyboard from the user, we are uh, displaying some formatted output onto the screen. So once this program gets executed, if you are having some formatted output displayed onto the screen, then the user or the programmer will come to know what, uh, what should be the operation performed, what input he has to give. So that's why to improve the readability of the output, we are using formatted output statement. So this is also one way of documenting your program. Okay, you can go for using formatted printf statements, that is formatted output statements for uh, uh, improving the readability of the output. The first message that gets displayed on the screen is enter marks code. So once the message is displayed, user will come to know that some marks is to be entered. Uh, using scanner, the data is read uh, during execution time. You know the syntax of writing scanner. Scanner percentage D comma address of marks. So now the input is read. Next step, uh, we are going to also read the number of awards won. Okay. So scanf percentage d comma address of awards. Now we are going to test the condition. This is one way branching. We are first testing the condition. If awards is greater than zero, just observe in the test condition part. Compare this construct with the general syntax what we discussed in the previous slide. In awards uh, greater than zero. This is what the condition we have written within this pair of common parentheses. Yes or no? And which operator we have used here? It is a greater than symbol, which is a relational operator. It is one of the operator in C, which is uh, a greater than operator, which is the relational operator in C. So we are testing whatever the value held in awards, is it greater than zero? And one more point you need to know is these relational operators and logical operators, these operators are going to return either zero or one based on the result of evaluation. This is what you need to remember. So here, awards we are testing. Assume user has entered awards value as say four. So is four greater than zero we are testing? Is four greater than zero? Yes, it is true. It has evaluated to true. Then this result of evaluation will be one. So if one means, so if within if condition, if the evaluation is, uh, it is if it were to be a non-zero value, uh, if it results in, in that case, it is nothing but true. So if true, control will enter the if block and the statement within the if block will be executed. Remember, relational operators, once evaluated, they are going to return either 0 or 1. That will be the result of evaluation of relational operator. So here in the example, what I have considered, it is greater than operator I have used, which is one of the relational operator we will see. So if the award value is greater than 0, the value returned by this expression will be 1. So if 1 means, if non-zero value you got, so if the condition, it is treated as true, so it is evaluated to true, so control will enter the if block. See, so if, what is the statement? Since it is a single line statement, I have not used pair of flower base. Hope you are able to notice that. A pair of flower base is required if you want to execute multiple statements within the, the if block, okay? But in my example, I want to execute only one statement. If this condition is satisfied, what is the operation I want to perform? I want to update the marks scored by the student by five if number of awards one is greater than zero. Okay. So this is the syntax of writing it. You know how to write printf statement. You know how to write scanf statement. You know how to declare the variable. You know the structure of the C program. If you are aware of all these constructs supported in C programming language, Given with any problem, you will not face any uh, problem to uh, implement that particular problem given, right? So here, here, in the previous slide, we discussed how to write the simple if statement. Uh, the same syntax we have followed here. If is a keyword within common parenthesis, the condition to be tested I have given. What condition I want to test? I want to check whether awards value is greater than zero. If it is true, what is the operation I want to perform? This is the true block statement I have written marks equals marks plus five okay after that i'll print the marks code by the student marks equals uh, marks code equals percentage d comma marks so simple formatted output statement i've given 
then I'll give return zero and close the flare trace. So how your code works? Let us uh, consider some example outputs. See, enter maths code. Assume user, this is the first message. When you execute this program, this is the first message that gets printed onto the screen. Enter marks code. Assume user enters the marks as 25. Okay. And now, enter the number of awards won. This is the next output that gets printed onto the screen. Okay. And scanf statement is executed. Assume user enters the uh, number of awards won as 3. So now, it goes for testing the condition. See, what is the awards value given? Uh, that is red. It is 3. Is 3 greater than 0? Condition is satisfied. So since condition is 3 is greater than 0, well, it evaluates to true. That means 1 will be written. Now if 1 means condition is satisfied, control will enter the true block. Are you getting? So awards value is 3. Okay. 3 is the awards value. We are testing whether 3 greater than 0. Okay. So what this relational expression will result in? Either 0 or 1. These are the only two possible outputs you are going to get whenever you are using a relational expression or whenever you are evaluating a relational expression. Okay. So since uh, we have taken the value which is greater than 0, this relational expression has resulted in the value 1. So if 1, what is the meaning? If true, 1 means any non-zero value you will get as a result of evaluation. That means it is true block. The control will enter into the true block of the if statement. So what is the true block statement we are having? That is marks is equal to marks plus 5. So this is the true block statement that gets executed if the condition what you are testing satisfies. So since it is if 1, the, the condition is evaluated to 1. If 1 means it's if non-zero value it is, condition is uh, treated as true. Uh, it has evaluated to true. So it will enter the true block. But if it is a failure, we shall take uh, see the output what you are going to get. Marks code is equal to 30. The updation has been done to the marks. 25 was the marks read. Since the number of awards 1 is 3, which is greater than 0, marks value has been updated by 5. The final marks code you have got is 30. Okay. So now, we shall test for another output. We shall again run the program. And this is what the output will get. My enter marks code. Scanf statement gets executed. That is the second statement you have written in the executable part of this program. So once the scanf statement is executed, it reads the marks code during execution time. Assume 40 is the marks read. And uh, number of awards one, let us take it as zero. Okay. One, once uh, this if condition is evaluated for this input, that is zero greater than zero we are testing. No, zero is not greater than zero. So what happens? The condition evaluates to false. So what will be returned here? It is zero. Zero is not greater than zero. So, 0 will be written. If 0 means it is a failure, so control will not enter the if block. It will go to the next statement after the if block. What is the next statement after if block you are having? It is a printf statement. So, printf, uh, the, this is the statement we are having. So, output what you will get is mark score equals 40. This is the output you are going to get. Okay, see, there is no updation done to the marks. We can update the marks scored by the student only if number of awards won by the student is greater than zero. At least one award student has to won to update the marks by five. Hope you have understood the application, how we are making use of simple if construct. Have you all followed how simple if works? Yes. Okay. Any yes, doubt on this? Hope this is clear how it works, the working. Okay. Shall I move on to the next form? Okay. Coming to the next form of if, that is if else statement. So this is also called as two-way branching. Okay. If the condition is satisfied, some set of statements will execute. If the condition evaluates to false, some other set of statements will execute. So this form of if we are going to call it as two-way branching. Okay. So the general form of if we'll see the if else construct we'll see. Already we have seen one of the keyword in this if construct that is if. If each letter written in lowercase, this is one of the keyword out of 32 keywords. For this form, if else construct, we'll use two keywords that is if as well as else. These are the two keywords we are going to use for this form of if. Okay. See the syntax. If test condition, 
you know the syntax of writing test condition it has to be parenthesis if you miss the parenthesis compiler will raise an error so um, uh, c programming language is syntax oriented programming language see that you are strictly following the syntax defined in this language okay so that's why you have to practice so whatever the syntax we discuss all those syntax you have to practice and you have to make use of those syntax to implement the problem then only you'll get familiarized with all the constructs and syntax okay so this is the complete syntax of if else construct okay. just observe the syntax the general form of if else construct if test condition that means first go for testing the condition if it evaluates to true control will enter the true block that is if block and it executes the statements you have given within the if block but whatever and where the control will go after executing the true block statements can anyone tell where the control may get transferred to can anyone explain the working of if else construct assume the test condition is evaluated to true so you know that control will enter the true block it will execute the statements whatever you give within the true block so after completion of execution can anyone tell where actually the control gets transferred to will it go to the else block when no, actually man. else block will be no, executed man. no no it will go to yes see after execution of true block statements it will skip the else block and it will transfer the control to the next statement after the if else construct okay so if the condition evaluates to false control will skip the true block statements it will go to the else block it executes this else block and after that where the control will be transferred to that is to statement x that means in general i have given statement x any statement you want to give you can give it after the if else construct again same thing holds if you are right, having single line statement uh, within if and else block no need of giving parenthesis if it were to be multiple statements you want to execute either in if block or in else block you have to parenthesize the express the statements okay a pair of larvae is required compulsory if it were to be multiple statements to be executed getting so this is how if else construct works and already the flow chart we have discussed the so test condition uh, we have we have labeled here if it evaluates to true see where actually the flow of execution is it goes to the true block statements after completion of true block statements control will be transferred to the next statement after the if else construct if it evaluates to false whatever the test condition you are evaluating if it is a failure then control will go to the false block statements after completion of false block statements control will be transferred to the next statement after the if else block so this is two way branching either true block statement is executed or false block that depends on whatever the condition you are testing okay hope this is clear that's what i've explained in this uh, in this slide there is a two way branching statement if and else are the two keywords we are using so in Uh, if the test condition evaluates to true, then true block statement is executed. Otherwise, false block statement is executed. In either case, either true block or false block is executed, but not both. So this is what you need to note: both will not be executed. Whereas in simple if statement, if the condition evaluated to true, control was entering the true block statement. After that, the next statement after the true block was getting executed. In if else statement. Two uh, set of statements we are having. So one uh, that is executed if the condition is evaluated to true. Other will be executed if the condition evaluates to false. After executing either true block or false block, control will be transferred to the next statement outside the if else construct. Both will not be executed. Either true block or false block will be executed. So that's what I have explained in the last point. Okay. In any form of if condition that they ask you to explain. Try to explain in these lines. Let's first, write the syntax. You can also write the flowchart and explain the working of that particular construct. With an example, you can explain. Okay. Coming to the example on if else statement, see hash include stdio dot h I've given since I'll be using I O functions. Print f and scanf. Int main is the function header. This is the form of the main function header I've used. Opening uh, flower page since it is a function. To indicate the block, we need to use parenthesis, pair of flower base. Then I have declared a variable in of integer type. Num is the name of the variable. 
So this is called first statement within the main is the declaration part where we have declared one variable of integer type. Now we are displaying the message enter an integer. Using printf, this is the first message we are printing onto the screen, enter an integer. Now we'll read the integer using scanf, scanf percentage d and num. Now I'm testing. So this program here to test whether the number is odd or even. If num modulus of 2 double equal to 0, just observe what is the test condition we have written with the if block. Okay. So num modulus of 2 double equal to 0. Modulus is the arithmetic operator used. Double equals is again the relational operator to check for equality. Okay. The expression on the LHS of the equality operator, it is num modulus of 2. If the result of this is equal to 0, that means uh, it is evaluated to true. Control will enter the true block and it executes this printf statement where it prints the number is an even number. Otherwise, in the else block, we are printing. If it is not an even number, obviously the number may, will be an odd number. These are the only two possibilities you are having when you test this condition. So if it is not an even number, control will go to the else block and it prints percentage D is an odd number. Wherever you are having this format specified percentage D, it just prints the value held in the variable, in the variable list. That is num is the variable which is holding that value. That value will be printed. So along with the input number, we are also printing the result. Okay. Finally, give return 0 and close the program. So this is if else construct in C. What is the syntax of writing if else construct? Two keywords we are using, if and else. Within parenthesis, uh, in the if block, in the if header, we'll test the condition. So what is the test condition we are going to write or what operators we can use? So we can use combination of, usually we'll go for uh, relational operators, okay, uh, for testing any condition. In combination to relational operator, you can use arithmetic operators or uh, logical operator. So it depends on the application, okay, which operator to use. But in most of the expressions, in most of the test conditions, we use relational operators. You should be familiar with all the relational operators. Greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, equal to and not equal to. So these are the six relational operators supported in C. So as and when we get the problem, we'll try to use the different relational operators. Okay. So let us see what will be the output. When you execute this program, first it displays the message, enter an integer. I have not given slash in here. That's why it will be waiting. So until an input is read, so it will the, the system will be waiting for the input. Infinitely it waits until an input is entered. That is how scanf will work. So once scanf is executed, until user enters the input, it will be infinitely waiting. So once input is read, then only scanf gets terminated. Okay. So here 20, assume 25 is the integer read by the user. So control will go to the next statement after scanner. What is the next statement we have written? It is uh, if condition. If 25 mod 2 is equal to 0. This is the condition we are testing. So what is 25 mod 2? Will it result in 0? No, right? It evaluates to false. So how actually this works is, let me write here. We are performing 25 modulus of 2. What is the remainder you will get? For 25 mod 2? 1. 1. 1, right? One. 1. Result of this expression is 1. We are testing whether 1 equal to 0. This is what we are testing. Is it true? No, false, man. right? No, this man. is evaluated to false. If false, what relational operator will return? If false? Yeah? Are you getting? Num is order. Odd. No, no, no. What is the return zero value man. of relational operator? Zero. Zero. Are you getting? Remember, relational operators will be evaluated to either zero or one. If the condition what you are testing is true, it will evaluate to one. If it is false, it will evaluate to zero. What we are testing is one double equal to zero we are testing. It is false. If false, the value written by this relational expression is zero. That means you are writing like this. If directly if you write if zero means control is uh, uh, this evaluation result of evaluation will be false. Control will go to the else block. Are you getting? So since it is evaluated to false, 
it will not execute this true block statement which is a single line statement it will go to the else block and this is a single line statement that is executed after completion of this execution where the control will be transferred to it will go to the next statement after the if else block what is the next statement we have written it is return zero which will terminate the program okay if you you can test it you can write a program where you can write if zero within parenthesis you directly give zero without any condition so let me write here only if i write a statement like this can you can anyone tell what will be the output if zero i'll write so print f okay let me write it as print f say i'll give a okay i'll close else i'll use an else block right i'll print in the else block i'll print say z print f i have not used any relational operator here directly i have given an integer value 0 uh, let me use the uh, the string as z now tell me if 0 print f a else print f z what will be the output if this if else block is executed ma'am z z output will be okay z so if zero means the it will assume that it has evaluated zero so if the expression evaluates to zero it is treated as false a failure condition control will go to the else block and it executes the statement where z gets printed if i give any non-zero value if i give if 30 assume i have given an integer value 30 if 30 means it is non-zero value that means it is treated as true block so control will enter this if block and it executes this statement and it prints the output as a have you understood how if else or how if condition is evaluated the test condition will be evaluated to either true or false true means it is non-zero value false means it is a zero value so it non uh, whenever you are using relational operator it will be either zero or one only these two possible outputs will get if you are using relational operator in the test condition if you are directly writing an integer value like this then in that case it tests whether it is greater than zero and that is uh, uh, is, is this a non-zero value or a zero value if it is non-zero it may be negative also if i write if minus 30 then also it, it, it is treated as true any non-zero value you give either positive or negative it is treated as true value control will enter the true block of the if statement if you give a zero value in the test condition part then it is treated as false control will enter the false block hope you have understood how if is evaluated and how actually this if else construct works have you all followed any doubt in this have you all followed yes yes ma'am okay we shall move on to the next form this is what the output and easily get the output if i give the integer as 12 it will be an even number that's why you'll get the output as 12 is an even number this is what the output or the format of the output in which i'm printing the result i wanted the user to enter the integer i read the integer Based on the condition what we are testing, I am printing the result. So and so number is an e odd number or an even number. Okay. Two sample outputs are given to uh, just to show you how actually the particular program will work. So now, can anyone tell if the same program, whatever we have discussed in the previous slide, that is to test whether the given number is for or that is odd or even. If the same program I want to implement using simple if construct, how to implement? Okay, this is the program we have discussed. Uh, which okay. form of if we have used? If else construct we have used. Uh, kindly uh, don't put in the chat window since I'm use uh, I'm using slideshow. I cannot see whatever you give in the uh, chat window. You can communicate orally. Okay. Yes. How to implement the same? Two times skip. Very good. If I if I skip this else, what happens? What is the problem? If I use uh, uh, if I just remove this else, it is a simple if only, right? 
if num modulus of 2 equal to 0, printf percentage d is an even number. Uh, after outside the if, if I write printf percentage d is an odd number, what is the problem? Two times uh, the same number. For which input you'll get both the outputs? For which type of input? Ma'am, ma if the condition uh, ma ma matches. Condition match. That means it, if it is what to be an even number, right? If I give 12 yeah. an even number, what happens? Control so it, 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 yeah. so it will uh, print both uh, the, yeah. the number is even and the number as well is as number odd. is odd. That is odd. what uh, if you use simple if that is what happens. True block if the condition is satisfied, true block is executed. After that, it goes for executing the next statement after the true block. That should not happen. I should print either number is odd or number is even. So what I have to do is if you are going for only simple if constructs for implementing this problem. You need to explicitly write the test condition. So what is the test condition I have to write? If num modulus of 2 equal to 0, print so and so number is an even number. Again, and write one more condition. If num modulus of 2 is not equal to 0, print a percentage d is an odd number. Okay? Same program, different forms of if we have used. For the previous slide, we had used if else construct. For this example, we have used simple if construct. We have not used else at all. With, with uh, this construct also, we can get the same result. Yes, sir. Okay. Hope you have understood how actually simple if and if else works. Followed. Ma'am, why we need to write double equal to? Double equal. Equal. We are comparing. Whenever you want to compare two quantities, we will be using equality operator. Okay. Double equals, it is called as equality operator. Whatever you are having on the left hand side of the equal equality operator, you want to compare it with the value on the right hand side. Okay. So if they are same, then what this uh, expression will return? So assume I want to test whether 5 equal to 5. So whatever the expression or whatever the value I am having on the left hand side of the equality operator, it is same as on the right hand side. So what relation? this is one of the relational operators. Double equal to is also one of the relational operator in C. We have already seen greater than symbol. So greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, okay, less than or equal to and double equals, which is equality operator, not equal to. These are the relational operators supported in C. Okay, these are the six relational operators supported in C. So for our program, that is to check whether the given number is even or odd. We have used equality operator. Since I want to compare whatever the result of modulus operator operation you will get. Whether this value is equal to 0. These are the two quantities I want to compare. Whenever you want to compare for equality. Whenever you want to check for equality. We will be using equality operator. So what will be the output if I want to test 5 equal to 5. 5 equal to 5. I told this is also a relational operator in C. What relational operator will return if the condition what you are testing is true? One. Yes. Come again. Can you repeat? 1 ma'am. 1. Remember this in general. Relational operators will be always evaluated to uh, that is, if it were to be true, it will be always resulting in 1. If it evaluates to false, it will result in 0. If you want to test that, you can write one printf statement. Within the main function, within, you just write one printf statement. Printf percentage d, comma, 5 double equal to 5. Write this relational expression. What will be the output? It prints 1. If I just change one of the value as say 6. Is 6 double equal to 5 if you test, what will be the output that gets printed? It will be 0. Are you getting? Relational operator will be evaluated to either 0 or 1. The result of evaluation will be either 0 or 1. Any doubt? Have you followed? No. Double equals is called as equality operator. It is one of the relational operator in C. And remember, just observe in this condition, which are the operators we are having? How many operators and which are those operators in the if, if header? Which are the operators? 
we are having dedicated topic on operators so exclusively we'll be discussing different operators with examples and problems and programs okay you need not worry see identify the operators in the if header modulus is one of the operator right modulus and double equals now how how actually the compiler will resolve this problem since two operators are involved in this expression right which operator has to be evaluated first either whether modulus operator has to be evaluated first or equality operator so for uh, resolving this problem precedence rule is applied okay there is a rule called precedence rule to decide the order in which operators are to be evaluated okay so here arithmetic operator modulus it is having higher priority or precedence compared to relational operator so that what is that precedence table across all the operators supported in c what is the precedence given with uh, uh, the explanations uh, we'll be discussing in later classes okay for the time being just know if there are multiple operators in an expression precedence rule will be applied to resolve or to find out in which order the operator will be evaluated so in our example modulus and double equal to operator you are having a uh, first modulus operator will be evaluated that is num modulus of 2 will be executed the result of this will be tested with zero we, we are testing for equality with zero so this is how the expression works okay here we have used in another simple if construct we have used not equal to okay so in uh, normally mathematically we will write not equal to as this symbol but this is not supported in c we need to write logical uh, that is exclamatory mark followed by that equal sign so this is called as not equal to this is also a relational operator in c okay same output we'll get no change at all problem we have same problem we have taken to test whether the given number is odd or even we, we, we have implemented that using if else construct and the same we have implemented using simple if construct what is the change you have to make it you need to again write the condition but this is not required if it were to be two way branching why to go for simple if we can uh, go for if else construct are you getting when we go for if else construct followed yes Let me move on to the next form. Nested if-else statement. So what do you mean by nesting? Nesting means a construct within another construct. It is called as nesting. Okay. So here, since we are discussing uh, nested if-else construct, if within an if, it is called as nesting of if statement. So writing if within another if statement. See the general form of nested if. We are going to test some condition using if. If test condition one, if it evaluates to true, then it goes for testing another condition. It may go to any levels of nesting. Okay. So here I have considered for general form uh, just uh, these two levels. If test condition one control will enter. If test condition two we have given. Within that statement one. Uh, is the statement to be executed if test condition two is evaluated? See else statement two, then close, and here see else block, and finally statement x. First try to analyze this general syntax, then we'll see how actually this nested if else statement works. So with the flowchart, if I explain, hope I think you'll better understand. Just observe test condition one. Uh, first this is evaluated. If it evaluates to true, so once the control comes to this next nested if else construct, the first condition will be tested. If it evaluates to true, then it goes for testing another condition. If this also evaluates to true, control will enter the true block and it executes whatever the statement you have given in this true block within the innermost if block. Whatever you have given, that will be executed. But whatever the test condition you have given, if it evaluates to false. In the inner if, if it evaluates to false, okay, control will go to the false block. That is the else block, and it executes the statement. Okay, after that, it will go to the next statement after the, that is, if nested if else block. So this is how it works. But if the test condition evaluates to false, you can see, outer if itself is a failure. 
then where the control will go to it will go to the else block okay so it will go to the else block where it executes statement 3 after that where the control will go it will go to the next statement statement x okay so nested if construct so first it tests the condition if it evaluates to true it will enter it will go for testing another condition if it also evaluates to true it will execute the statement but inner if if it is a failure it will go to its associated else block it executes that statement after execution of this where the control will go it will go to the statement x just observe it will not go to this else block this else block is written outside the if so else block will be executed and the statement 3 will be executed only if the test condition 1 the outer if what you are what you are testing if it is a failure then only control will go to the that is uh, statement 3 just see that so say just try to analyze using this flow chart first itself condition fails means it will go to statement 3 and control will go to the statement x next statement outside the nested if else constraint a test condition is true go for testing the condition if it evaluates to false statement 2 is executed for true means statement 1 gets executed then control will go to statement x and one more point you need to remember is uh, if it were to be unparenthesized if the if else constructs are unparenthesized so uh, if you are finding the, uh, there is else block so always else block will be paired with a recent unmatched or unpaired if block so that we'll see with an example what is the meaning of uh, this and what problem arises if you are unparenthesizing uh, the nested if else construct and if you find an else block without uh, uh, if you find an if block without a matching else block so that problem we call it as dangling else problem that with an example we'll discuss okay i will give the explanation in this slide if, uh, already i've explained this okay first we'll see one example and then we'll look into the dangling else problem just see we have included the header file stdio.h and this program i have written to check whether the given number is positive negative or zero okay so that is the problem statement i have considered just see what we have done within the main function we have declared a variable num uh, which is of integer type we have prompted the user to enter an integer using a printf function i read the integer using scanner once the input is read we are testing this condition if num is greater than or equal to zero see which relational operator we have used here it is greater than or equal to if this is true then i'll enter the if block and we'll go for testing one more condition if num greater than zero okay if it is true what we can infer number is positive right we'll print uh, using printer percentage d is a positive number else what i should print just see this is nested if else construct if number is greater than or equal to zero condition is evaluated true uh, true then control will enter if block once it enters the if block what are the two possibilities you find greater than zero or greater than zero or equal to zero right this is what the outer if we have written num greater than or equal to zero if any of these two is satisfied control will enter the if block within this what is the condition i'm uh, just testing whether number is greater than zero if number is not greater than zero obviously number will be equal to zero since uh, the, con the control will enter the if block only if this condition is satisfied outer if is satisfied so in the else block what i can print is number is zero okay and close the if block so if number is neither greater than nor equal to zero if the outer if condition is a failure what should be uh, written in the else block negative negative if they neither greater nor equal means obviously number will be less than zero where we'll print in the else block that is percentage d is a negative number written zero see just observe if only one statement is to be executed either in the true block or false block i need not use parenthesis if multiple statements are to be executed you can make use of parenthesis okay so just observe how we have used uh, nested if else construct to implement this problem
test the condition if it is true enter test one more condition if it is true we'll print uh, number is positive else we have printed number is zero if the outer if itself is a failure simply control will go to the else block outside the nested if construct and it prints number is negative after if else nested if else construct is complete in its execution return zero statement is executed let's see the output if i enter value 50 assume num value is 50 50 greater than or equal to 0 we are testing is 50 greater than or equal to 0 let me write yes. that relational expression this is what we are testing 50 is it greater than or equal to 0 since it is a relational operator it returns value 1 if 1 means condition is satisfied control enter the if block again we are testing the condition is 50 greater than 0 is it true 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 so 1 will be returned again the result of evaluation is 1 if 1 means so control will enter the true block where it executes 50 is a positive number after printing this output where the control will go it will go to return 0 to this uh, place the control will be transferred to okay either if or else will be executed so this is how if else construct will work you already know how this if else construct works after executing either if block or else block control will go to the return 0 statement it will not go to else block when actually else block will be executed if the outer if condition what you are testing if it is a failure then only this else block will be executed. Yes, sir. Just see. 50 is a positive number in this. If I give value as minus 12, is minus 12 greater than or equal to 0? Is it true? What will be the value written for that expression? Minus 12 greater than or equal to 0. What it returns? False. False. That means false means what? I, what is the zero, return value? Zero, zero, zero. zero. If zero means, will it enter the if block? Just see. Sorry. Just observe. We are testing if zero. This is a failure, so it will not enter this true block. It will go to the false block where it executes print of statement. Minus twelve is a negative number that will be printed since outer if is evaluated to false. It will not at all enter the if block. It will go to the else block and it prints minus 12 is a negative number. Okay. Coming to the next output. Assume uh, uh, next the case. Uh, let us give the integer value as 0. Now here you can check. Is uh, 0 greater than or equal to 0? The condition tested. Yes, it is true. It evaluates to true. That means it returns the value 1. Control enters the if block. We are testing is 0 greater than 0. No, 0 is not greater than 0. This evaluates to false. That is 0 will be written by this uh, relational expression. So control will go to the else block. Since if 0 means it will go to the else block where it prints the output as number is 0. Are you getting all these three cases? Different uh, test cases? Are you able to understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Okay, I will give more and more problems you can solve it so that you can better understand the, each of these concepts. You need not worry. In one class, it may be difficult uh, uh, to grasp everything. As and when you um, go on using the construct, definitely you will get confidence in making use of these constructs to implement your programs. Okay. So uh, that's what I told dangling else problem. The, this problem will arise. Whenever you are dealing with nested if else construct, this problem arises. And uh, this occurs when matching else is not available for an if construct. And what is to be noted is always you have to match else to the most recent unmatched if in the current block. So what do you mean by this? That I'll explain with an uh, example. So that is what you have to know. Else is always paired with the most recent unpaired if. Unpaired. I'm just saying it is unpaired if. Let us see with this example. Assume I have taken an integer variable uh, here in this example. I have declared an integer variable num which is initialized with 30. And observe I have not used any parenthesis and I have simply given a uh, nested if else statement. Two else you are having and two if statements we are having. So whether 
uh, this else is to be matched with this if or this if. Okay, that is the problem. This is dangling else problem. So else, this is the first else we have encountered. This else has to be paired with recent unmatched if statement. Which is the recent unmatched if statement to this else? Num greater than 40. Num greater than 40. That means just try to match the if else constructs here. Else, this else is matched with this if construct. So already this if has been paired with this else block. So what about this else? To which if we have to match it? So this else is matched with recent unmatched if construct. This is already matched with this else. So this else is actually matched with this if construct. So remember always else will be paired with recent unmatched if construct. This is what you need to know. So now what will be the output? Can anyone guess the output of this program? Assume well, uh, so here. Uh, good morning, well friend. Um, good morning, friend. Good morning. Uh, we are testing. Yes, num not equal to 30. No, it is equal to 30. Condition is a failure. Since outer if itself is a failure, control will go to the else block. So this else is paired with this if. So it will not go to, it will, it will not go for printing high. Uh, it goes to this else block. Since this is the else that is paired with this if, where it prints good morning. Very good. So if I take the value as say 45, 45 is the value of num, what will be the output? Hello. Hello. Very good. So here it has 45 not equal to 30. Yes, it is true. It prints 45 greater than 40. Yes, it is true. It prints. It prints hello. So if I take the value as say 35, if 35 is the input uh, held in num, 35 not equal to 30, yes it is true, it enters. Is 35 greater than 40? No. Uh, no. For this if, which is the matching else construct? Hi. This one, Hi. It prints Hi. high. Are you getting? Have you understood? Always remember, whenever you are dealing with nested if else construct, else has to be paired with recent unmatched if construct. Remember this. Okay, I will give uh, in tutorials uh, such questions. You try to pair the else with the uh, recent unmatched if and try to guess the output. Okay, for this uh, value of now, you will get the answer as good morning. Right? Coming to the last form of if construct that is the else if ladder construct. Uh, this is the construct you will be using for your first uh, lab syllabus program implementation since it is specified in the question itself in your lab syllabus. You have to make use of this construct only to implement that problem, okay? So is the general form of uh, else if ladder. We are testing the condition and if it is satisfied, statement one is executed, else if test condition two, we are going for testing the next condition. If it is true, statement two is executed. Otherwise, if that is also a failure, it will go for testing condition three and so on. Any levels of uh, else if ladder you can give. And finally, you are having a default else block where you are uh, executing some set of statements and statement x finally. So this is the general form of else if ladder construct. Okay, else if ladder. So just observe. Uh, here you are seeing this is also called as multi-way branching. So next, that is uh, if else construct, it is called as two-way branching. Uh, else if ladder construct. It is called as multi-way decision making or multi-way branching. Several conditions you are writing, but if uh, how actually this nested uh, sorry else if ladder construct will work is you can observe or you can analyze you with this flowchart. See, once the control comes to this nested if else construct, it goes for testing the first condition. If the first condition evaluates to true, try to understand, try to concentrate here. If the first condition itself is satisfied, control will enter that particular true block. It executes the statements, whatever you have given. After that, if any one condition has been satisfied, then where the control will be transferred to? After completion of the execution, it will go to the next statement outside the else if ladder construct. This is what you need to remember here. So test condition one, if first condition itself is true, statement one gets executed. After completion of statement one execution, it will go to statement X. It will not go for testing any other condition what you have given. 
when activate will go for testing condition 2 can anyone tell when test condition 2 is evaluated when test condition 1 is false and then... yes very good if test con first condition is a failure then only it will go for else if the next condition if it evaluates to true what happens statement 2 gets executed after executing statement 2 where the control will be transferred to statement x statement x so if test condition 1 is a failure then test condition 2 is also a failure then only it goes for con testing condition 3 if this is also a failure it will go to the next else if constructor the next condition is tested if all these conditions are failures none of the test condition is satisfied then where the control will be transferred to default state default else block so whatever the conditions you have given if all are failures then it will go to the default else block and it executes the statements after execution of default else block then control will go to the next statement so this is how nested if uh, sorry else if ladder construct will work so don't get confused if any one condition evaluates to true it will enter that block execute then it comes outside the uh, else that is nested if else sorry else if ladder construct it will not go for testing any other condition that is uh, illustrated in this flow chart you can just check out see test condition one true and statement one executed then control go, goes to statement x if test condition one is false then only it goes for test condition two if this is also false it goes for testing next condition if this is also failure it goes for testing next condition if all these test conditions are failures control will go to the default else block after completion of that it will go to the next statement after the uh, that is else if ladder construct this is how else if ladder works follow we'll see the example we'll understand so the same thing i've explained here it is a multi-way designing statement or decision making statement each else is associated with an if as you can see in that uh, 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 syntax the conditions are evaluated from top downwards so first the highest uh, the top condition is tested and then if it is a failure then only it goes for testing the next condition and so on as soon as a true condition is found the statement associated with it is executed and the control is transferred to statement x while skipping the rest part of else if ladder this is what you need to know okay if all the conditions become false then the final else block that is the default else block will be executed so this is the so this is how else if ladder construct will work hope this is clear you should see example i've taken a variable uh, of integer type named code we have prompted the user to enter the value. We are reading that value using scanner. Now we are testing the condition. If code value equals to 1, we'll print white. Else if code value is 2, we'll print red. Else if code value is 3, we'll print blue. Else we'll print blue. Return 0, close. If I enter the value, let us see. If this is the value entered, that is 2, what will be the output? Red. It prints only red. Okay. Just see. Code 2 equals to 1. No. It will go to the else block. It checks 2 equals to 2. Yes, it is true. It prints red. After that, return 0 is executed. Output will be red. If I give 1, first condition itself is satisfied. It prints white. It will not go for testing any other condition. It will simply go to the uh, return 0 statement. It prints white. After that, it goes to return 0. So if I give 10, what will be the output? Blue. It fits blue. It is neither 1, nor 2, nor 3. All these test conditions are false. So control will go to the default else block where it fits blue. After that, it goes to the next statement after the else if ladder construct. Okay. So if I replace, if I remove this else block, can, can, can anyone compare and tell me what is the difference between else if ladder construct and simple if construct if, say, if i replace this uh, tell me the working of this uh, if constructs simple ifs i have used i will remove all else how this works assume i have given the value as 3 if i give the code value as 3 
how we are green programming and blue what? will be printed come again green blue will be printed okay let me remove this also let me remove this printf also i want you to explain if you are using simple if what is the problem if uh, what is the advantage if you use else if later construct for this uh, multi way decision making if i have given value as 3 code value as 3 how will our code works okay let me take uh, for explaining that it will not work uh, wait, wait, just a minute uh, let me give the value as 1 uh, to uh, give the difference it's better to take the code value as 1 now tell me with this value as 1 how simple it works and how else if ladder works if it were to be else if ladder what happens first condition white is will, white will be printed will be printed white after that where the control will be transferred to in L in else if ladder return zero right if it were to be simple if what happens it will be transferred to if code code equals to all ifs will be executed right see if code equal to 1 it prints white after that the control will not get transferred to return zero it will go to the since it is a simple if it will go to the immediate next statement it will check is 1 equal to 2 if since it is false it will not print red it will again go to the next if condition it prints if the 1 equals to 3 so all the if conditions are evaluated right but since it is a failure result of evaluation is a failure it will not print that uh, whatever the true block you are having in that if block so if you are using simple if for multi way decision making all the conditions will be tested for such inputs but if you are using else if ladder construct what is the advantage wherever the, the condition gets satisfied yes once it the condition evaluates to true it will enter that block after completion of execution simply the control gets transferred to the statement outside the else if ladder construct this is what a difference you have to notice have you understood are able to analyze yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am yes so some uh, you can expect uh, such questions that you may uh, you may be given with a problem uh, like uh, if code is equal to 1 print white if code equals to 2 uh, print red and so on I implement this using simple if construct and else if ladder construct if that is as you should know how to implement it if it were to be simple if then uh, remove don't make use of else construct just write for each the conditions for blue also uh, here if you are be specifying the condition okay so uh, uh, then if it were to be else if ladder construct what you can do is you can make use of uh, this else if uh, the statements So you know how the working of simply for else if ladder construct. Okay. Let me move on to the next slide. So this completes uh, the basics of different forms of if construct. Hope you have understood all the forms of uh, if constructs. Right. Now we shall quickly go through this question. So this is the lab syllabus uh, question. The first program of a lab syllabus. See, totally. Uh, see, seven questions are there in your lab syllabus, and each question is having two sub questions. So, in that first question, uh, question A, uh, this is to develop a C program to find the roots of a quadratic equation for non-zero coefficients using if-else ladder construct. Just observe which construct you have to use: if-else ladder construct, and for which coefficients. For non-zero coefficients, we have to find the roots. Okay, and you know the formula for uh, computing the roots of the quadratic equation. Let me just uh, quickly discuss that. See here. First, we are going to compute the discriminant, right? If discriminant, uh, this is the formula you are using to compute the discriminant. Before to that, you need to. What is the input you are giving for this problem? Question is to find the roots of a quadratic equation. You require the coefficients to be read. A, B, C. If you treat them as coefficients, first you have to read the values for the coefficients. After that, you need to check whether any of the coefficient value is zero. Since in the question they have given non-zero coefficient, so just uh, come check each number with zero, whether it is equal to zero. If so, then this is how you are going to validate your input. You will check whether any of the number entered by the user is zero. If it is so, we shall print some error message and we'll, we shall terminate the program. 
if it is a valid input entered, a non-zero value for each of the coefficient, then what we'll do is we'll go for computing the discriminant. What is the formula to compute the discriminant? Discriminant is equal to b square minus 4ac. This is the formula you're using. After computing the discriminant, you know the possible three outputs uh, which you are going to get after the discriminant is computed. If discriminant value is equal to zero, we can just interpret that uh, uh, the roots as equal roots. And what is the formula you are using to compute equal roots? It is minus b by 2a. This is the formula you are using to compute the roots of uh, the quadratic equation if discriminant value is zero. If the discriminant value is greater than zero, you can infer that it is distinct roots and you can compute the roots using this formula minus b plus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a and root 2 you can compute as minus b minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a okay if it is neither equal to nor distinct root obviously root may be imaginary root where discriminant value is less than zero for which you need to compute separately the real part and the imaginary part so real part how we'll compute using the formula minus b by 2a imaginary part it is square root of uh, that is b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so what you have to remember is for negative discriminant value we cannot compute the square root so whatever you are passing for, for the square root that is b square minus 4ac the result of this must be converted to positive so that we can make use of built-in mathematical function to compute the square root so what how actually we can make use of lc ladder construct for this implementation so there are three possibilities here this is multi-way decision making construct which you can use okay we'll first compute discriminant we'll compare the discriminant value with zero if it is true we'll uh, treat that as uh, equal root we will write an else if construct else if discriminant is greater than zero we'll print and it has distinct root and will compute the root and will print the root also. If it is neither equal to nor greater than, obviously it will be less than. So we can have a default else block and we can print uh, the roots are imaginary. And in A plus IB form, we can print the uh, that is root 1 and root 2. It will be A plus IB and A minus IB. This is the two form uh, to uh, print root 1 and root 2 if the discriminant value is less than 0. So this is how we are going to. Uh, this is what the logic we are going to use to implement the first problem okay so kindly if you are having your observation book kindly take this quote in your observation so that in the coming week lab you can execute this i can give the comment for this program as if you want to use multi-line comment or single line comment it is left to your implementation let me give it as program 1a this is that program it is to find the roots find the roots of the quadratic equation this is what i can print okay to find the roots of a quadratic equation this is what the comment has given let me use hash include stdiver.h since i'll be using built-in mathematical functions i'll include the header file math.h and once uh, if the user enters invalid input, so any zero input, maybe for any of the coefficient, we shall terminate the program displaying some error message. So for that, we'll be using one more built-in function. It is exit. So for that, we need to include stdlib.h. Okay. stdlib stands for standard library dot h. So math dot h, you know, stdiver dot h, you know. So these are the header files we are going to include for, uh, for this program implementation. Then write the main function header, int main, open close parenthesis. Okay. And try to observe uh, how actually we have indented our program. So try to indent your program properly so that it improves the readability of the program. And if you commit any mistake, you can easily debug the program. So that is the advantage of indenting your program. Try to leave four character space. Uh, that is, don't start everything uh, in the same column. In the first column, don't start uh, all the statements in C. Uh, try to leave some four character space. If there are related data, uh, related statements, try to group them. So, so try to improve the readability by proper indentation. Okay. Now, we shall declare the 
variables required. I require three variables to read the coefficient, say a, b, c. Then I'll uh, declare the variables, say r1, r2, uh, to hold the roots computed. And to compute the discriminant and hold the value, we'll take uh, one more variable, uh, discriminant. And to store the imaginary part and the real part, let me take the variables real and imaginary. If any other variable is required, let's see. We can go, go get back and we can declare it. Okay. For the time being, these are the variables we have declared. A, B, C for the coefficients. If you want to name the R1 and R1, R2 variables as root 1, root 2, that is also fine. R1 is to hold the first root computer. R2 is to hold the second root computer. And DISC I have given to hold the discriminant computer. And to hold the real part and imaginary part computed. If it were to be imaginary root, uh, those are the variables I have declared. And what is the data type I have taken for declaring these variables? It is Float. Okay. Now, since it will be fractional part, uh, we, have, we shall, uh, the best appropriate uh, data type you can consider for this application is float. Now, what are the next step? Once the variables are declared, what we have to do? What is the next step? Whatever the variables we are going to use, we have declared. Now, we, we need to read the input. Right. So we shall prompt the user using printf. Let me display the message. Enter the coefficients. Let us prompt the user to enter the coefficients. Okay. This is what the message we are printing. How to read the coefficients? I need to make use of scanf function. Scanf. How many coefficients I have to read for the quadratic equation? Three coefficients. What is the data type? It is floating point. So what format specifier we have to use? It is percentage F. We are getting three format specifiers we have used. Percentage F, percentage F, percentage F, comma, address of A, comma, address of B, comma, address of C. Just see how I am grouping the related data, uh, related instructions. Yeah, ma. I have done the declaration. I have displayed the message, enter the coefficients, and we are reading the coefficients. Now, before come going for computing the discriminant, we need to test whether it is a valid input user has entered. We need to validate the input. So how to do the validation? I can write, don't take this. I can write the statement if A is equal to 0 or I can use logical or operator to combine uh, compound conditions. B equal to 0 okay, or double pipeline. So you can see on the keyboard, we are having pipeline symbol. And if you write double pipeline, it is called as logical or C double equal to zero. If any of these is satisfied, you need to print that is invalid input. You can print the message as invalid input. Invalid input. Since as per the question they have given, you need to read non-zero coefficients. After printing this message, let us make a call to exit function, exit 0. So this is one of the built-in functions supported in C. And it is declared in stdlib.h file. So in your program, if you are using exit function, see that you are including stdlib.h, standard library.h file. Okay. And what is the parameter you are passing to exit function? It is 0. So once exit function is executed, it is going to terminate your program. Zero indicates this is the status code as you are having written zero, which terminates the program. Uh, return is a keyword, but exit is a function. So try to notice the difference between return zero and exit zero. Both will terminate the program. Okay. And the status code returned is zero, indicating successful termination of the program. If you are giving any non zero value, it is uh, the program is terminated with failure. Okay. That is the meaning. And uh, return is keyword. Out of 32 keywords, return is a keyword, but exit is not a keyword. It is a function, built-in function or library function, which you find in stdlib.h. Okay. So this is what the validation we are doing. And simple if construct I have used to test whether the number is uh, the valid inputs are entered. Uh, we have used simple if construct. Now, if it were to be valid input, then only we'll go for computing the discriminator. So you can write that uh, if header as if a double equal to zero or b double equal to zero or c double equal to zero. If you don't want to write this condition, you can also write 
if a star b star c double equal to 0. What is the meaning of this? A star b star c equal to 0? Multiplication. Yeah, if any one coefficient value is 0, what it results in? 0 only, right? Total value is 0. Yeah, total final value will be 0. So the condition will be satisfied, control will enter, it prints invalid input. As per the question, we need to read uh, non-zero coefficients as input. So that's why if we, we can either write separately the condition to test each input, whether it is zero or not, using uh, that is a logical uh, or operator and relational double equal to operator as I did in the previous case. Or we can simply write the expression as if A star B star C double equal to zero, where star is called as multiplication operator. If you multiply these three values, if it results in zero, then also we can say it is an invalid input. This is also fine. Okay. So if it is so, what happens? Control will enter the if block. If the condition is satisfied and it prints invalid input and it will terminate the program since exit function is given. If it is not satisfied, that means if none of the inputs what you have entered is zero, condition fails. So control will come outside the if block. Since it is simple if, it will go to the next statement after the if block. So what is to be written here is we need to compute the discriminant. How do you compute discriminant? Discriminant is equal to b square minus 4ac. Just see the formula b square minus 4ac. You cannot write in c the square. So to compute the square what we have to do? I can make use of either power function or I need to split this as b into b. I need to write the statement as discriminant equals b star b minus okay 4 star a star c semicolon so statement must be terminated by semicolon this is how i have to write are you getting if you don't want to use star you can also write discriminant equals power function you can make use of power function mathematical function power b comma 2 two arguments it receives so power of b comma 2 which is nothing but b square minus 4 star a star c okay i can also write it like this since it is just by 2 i need to multiply i can write the expression b star b a star c any of these uh, statements are fine hope you are getting b square minus 4 ac explicit multiplication operator you have to use if it were to be the product to be computed 4ac, how we have written, just see the equivalent C expression. This is a mathematical expression which you need to compute. B square minus 4ac. How we have written C equivalent expression. Discriminant equals B square, that is B star B minus 4 star A star C. This is how you have to write. So that's what we are going to write here. B star B minus 4 star A star C. Semicolon. Now, discriminant is computed. Now, we'll try to write else if ladder construct. If the discriminant what you have computed, if it is greater than 0. Sorry, let us first check for equal to 0. Let us check for uh, equal roots. Okay. Condition has to be written within common parenthesis. If it is true, write the true block statement. We shall print the message as equal roots. Roots are real and equal. This is the message I am going to print real and equal. Okay. See what is the message we have printed? If discriminant equal to 0, we will print roots are real and equal. And now we shall compute root 1 and root 2. R1, root 1 and root 2 will be same. I can write R1 equals R2 equals. So separately if you want to write, you can write it like this. R1 equals. Then what is the formula to compute equal roots? Minus b by 2a. Okay. So, how to write minus b by 2a? Minus b. Division operator is front slash. Okay. 2a is the expression. which is the denominator for this uh, expression. So, we need to parenthesize it. 2 star b. Let's see. If you don't parenthesize, what happens is first b by 2 will be computed. Result will be multiplied by a. You have mm -hmm. to parenthesis. You have to parenthesize it. Even in discrim discriminant, you have to parenthesis. No, uh, uh, so since you, you are not aware of uh, uh, the precedence of operators. So here, which are the operators I have used? 
it is multiplication operator and subtraction operator minus that's arithmetic operator how actually compiler will evaluate this first b star b will be done and again four star a star c will be computed and the results will be subtracted now so no need of parenthesizing this expression okay so out of star and minus star is having higher priority or precedence so that uh, all those things we will discuss in detail when we go to operators. For this expression, no need of parenthesizing. So first B star B will be evaluated. That is, after that it evaluates 4 star A star C. Result will be subtracted. So no need of parenthesis. That is what we expect, right? That is what the operation we expect that is happening without parenthesizing it. If you want to explicitly parenthesize, you can give it. But it is unnecessary parenthesis you are using okay so r1 equals minus b by 2 star a again i have to write r2 equals minus b by 2 star a you can uh, just uh, avoid this by writing compound assignment statement like this see r1 equals r2 equals minus b by 2 star a it computes this minus b by 2 star a it assigns it to r2 and r1 single line statement I have written to compute root 1 and root 2. If you are getting confused with this assignment statement, okay, uh, there is compound assignment statement where two assignment operators we have used, you can write it separately. R1 equals minus B by 2 star A, R2 equals minus B by 2 star A. Two times you can write the same expression. So now we shall print the roots what we have computed. See what steps we have followed. The tested the condition, whether discriminant equal to 0. If so, we have print, printed roots are real and equal. We have computed the roots. And now we are printing the roots which we have computed. Slash n I will give. I will print root 1 equals percentage here. Since it is floating point type, comma r1. Okay. And I will close. If you want to use same printer uh, for printing root 2 also, you can. Or separately, you can print root 1 and root 2 slash m will give root 2 equals percentage here right and I will give r2 if you want to compute only root 1 and you want to print that value for root 1 and root 2 that is also fine so this is for uh, if it were to be equal now I need to write else if if it is not equal to 0 if the discriminant value is not equal to 0 else if I need to test whether discriminant value is greater than 0. If it is so, we can infer that it is distinct root. We will write print. We will just print the output as slash in roots are real and okay. Roots are real and distinct. That is. After printing this message, now we shall compute the uh, roots. What is root 1 formula? It is minus b plus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Root 2, it is minus b minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. But I need not compute again b square minus 4ac. It is already computed. It is in the variable discriminant. So how to write the statement, equivalent c statement for this formula? Root 1 equals minus b. I need to write plus square root is there you cannot compute square root uh, using this symbol we need to make a call to the mathematical function square root name of the function is sqrt to compute the square root or uh, what is the parameter you need to pass to the square root function it is b square minus 4ac so in which variable you are having b square minus 4ac it is in discriminant variable just give this b square minus 4ac that is discriminant value Parenthesize this entire expression. Divide this result by 2 star a. 2a. Since it is 2a, you need to show explicitly multiplication operator. So, we have given 2 star a semicolon. Try to analyze this mathematical expression. And what is the c equivalent expression you have given? See, this is the c equivalent expression you have given. Okay. Minus b plus to compute the square root, you have used the built-in mathematical function, SQRT. If you are using SQRT in your program, math.h header file you have to include. 
and what argument you are passing and it is a function that's why you use common parenthesis here discriminant this is what the argument we are passing close the uh, particular function and then this complete expression we are parenthesizing since the complete result has to be divided by 2u same thing we shall write it here root 1 equals the parenthesis minus p okay, plus sqrt of discriminant divided by 2 star a okay this is what i write how to compute root 2? Same expression. I'll copy. I'll go see. And I'll just paste it. And I'll change the operator plus 2 minus. The formula for computing root 1. It is minus b plus square root of discriminant by 2a. The formula for computing root 2 is minus b minus square root of discriminant by 2 star a. So before dividing it by 2 star a, see that the entire numerator is parenthesized. Whatever the result you get, that result has to be divided by 2 star a. Print the result. Root 1 and root 2 are to be printed. I'll use this. Same printf statements. Let me just paste it here. See. After computing root 1 and root 2. Sorry. What is the variable name I have given? R1 and R2 are the variables I have declared. I have to use the same variable throughout the program. So R1 equals the, uh, we are printing root 1 and root 2 with, in this format. Okay. So if the discriminant is neither equal to 0, just observe, we have used LC flutter construct. If discriminant is neither equal to 0 nor greater than 0, we will have a default else block. Obviously, it will be less than 0. Okay. Where we are going to print the roots are imaginary. Let's have the printf statement, printf slash n, I'll give the message as roots are imaginary, okay, close the double quote, terminate the statement with semicolon, now compute the real part, what is the formula to compute the real part, it is minus b by 2 star a, okay, and how to compute the imaginary part, will compute imaginary part equals square root of sqrt function we have to make use of and as i told we cannot uh, compute the square root of negative value uh, so that's why we shall compute the uh, we shall convert the negative value to positive either directly you can prefix minus sign minus discriminant you can give square root of minus discriminant by 2 star a you can give to convert the negative value to positive this is one way of doing it this is also fine hope you are uh, able to understand or to get the absolute value of a floating point number there is a built-in function mathematical function in math.h header file that is f apps so that you can use that also f a b s for floating point number, you can take the absolute. That means positive. It converts negative number to positive. So you can use this also. Okay. Within square root function, we have made a call to another function. That is f apps. So what is the function of f apps? If the discriminant value is negative, it converts it into positive. Its square root it is going to compute. The result will be divided by 2 star a. So if you, are, if you don't want to make use of f apps, what you can do is? Just prefix minus sign to discriminant variable. It will convert negative to positive. What is minus into minus? It is plus. It converts it into positive. So after calculating the real part and imaginary part, and observe two functions, built-in functions we have used. Both are mathematical functions. If you are using square root f apps in your program, you see that you have included math.h header file. Okay. So we shall print the result, root 1 and root 2. In the form a plus ib and a minus ib. So print of slash n. I'll print root 1 equals percentage f. That is real part I need to print. Plus explicitly I'll print the symbol plus. I will print percentage f. Okay. The imaginary part I'll print. I'll put comma. I'll give real comma imaginary. The a plus ib form we have used to print the real part and imaginary part. And uh, similarly, to go for printing root 2. Root 2 
two equals percentage here minus percentage here close the double quote comma real comma imaginary okay close the else block finally give return zero and close the program this is the complete implementation of this problem um, root to i i yes oh yeah i is missing this is explicitly to improve the readability we are putting i percentage here so root one equals percentage of where real part will be printed plus i into imaginary part root two equals real part minus i into imaginary part this is how we are printing the uh, imaginary roots see how we have used lc flatter construct i have given the comment i have included all the header files required next this is the main function header we have used we declared all the variables in the declaration section in the executable part just observe what statements we have written First, we have to prompt the user to enter the coefficients. We have read the coefficients using scanner. Then we are validating the input using the simple if statement. If a star b star c equal to zero, we are printing invalid input and we'll terminate the program by making a call to exit function. Okay, there's a built-in function. If you are using exit in your program, std lib dot h standard library dot h header file is to be included. If it were to be valid input entered, then if block will not be executed since uh, the test condition will fail if all are non-zero values you have entered control will go to the next statement after the if block where discrement value is computed using the formula b square minus 4ac then we'll write the lc flatter construct we'll check whether discrement value is equal to zero if you want you can write the comments wherever you require explanation you can just check if uh, that is if this is for equal roots equal roots so we can write single line comments at the end of the line uh, for whichever statement you want the explanations short description if you want you can write single line comment if discrement equal to zero that means it is equal root we'll print the message as the roots are real and equal then we'll compute the roots using the formula minus b by 2a and we have printed the roots else if discrement is greater than zero see we are printing roots are real and distinct if you want you can take the comment distinct root okay distinct roots the uh, discrement value is greater than zero then we'll compute root one root two and we have printed root one and root two if it is neither equal to zero nor greater than zero this default else block is entered only if the roots are imaginary okay imaginary roots are complex roots you can say this is the comment i'm giving it is optional to give the comments this is just to improve the readability in the default else block we have computed real part imaginary part and we have printed the roots of the imaginary uh, that is uh, the imaginary roots we have printed in a plus ib form a plus ib a minus ib hope you have understood let us just uh, execute this and compile the program and i'll now execute there are no errors so first as soon as you execute the program see what is the output you are getting first message this is what the first statement you have written in your program. Just see what is the statement we have written. After the declaration part, the first executable statement you have written is within the main function. Enter the coefficients. See so slash and I have started with. So that's why cursor has been brought to the new line. One line is left. In the new line, it has printed enter the coefficients message. After that also I have given slash and. So cursor is brought to the new line. Now I'll give the coefficients as say 1, 2, 1. These are the three coefficients I'll give. Once I give this and press enter, until I press enter, it will be waiting. The scanf will not be terminated. Only after I give the input, then only if I press enter, the scanf function will be terminated. Just see. As soon as I press enter, this condition uh, uh, it computes the discriminant. It has tested. Before that, it has tested. It is valid input. Yes, it is valid input. So, discriminant is computed. And it... Uh, the, this, since the discriminant value is equal to zero, first if condition is satisfied, so it has printed roots are real and equal. It has computed root one, root two. See the format of the output, what I have printed. It's left to your implementation. Whichever format you want to print, you can print it. If you want to use only one printf statement to print root one and root two, that is also fine. So if, let us run for one more test case. Let me give it as Say one, two, and three. It prints 
this output as roots are imaginary. Root 1 will be printed okay, in A plus IB form and root 2 will be printed. Since the discriminant value is less than 0, it has printed roots are imaginary. Okay. We will get minus 8, uh, the discriminant value, which is less than 0. So, it has printed as imaginary. If I give say, one more uh, value, we shall check. Say 1, uh, say 3, 2, if I give. Just observe what type of uh, uh, roots it has printed. Roots are real and distinct. Since the discriminant value will get for 1, 3, 2, it is 3 square minus 4 into 1 into 2, uh, you will get 1, uh, where uh, the discriminant value is greater than 0. So it prints uh, roots are real and distinct and it has printed root 1 and root 2. If I give some invalid input, just see, I will execute. I will give the coefficient as say 0, 2, 5. What is the output it has printed? Invalid input. We are checking for validity using simple if construct in our program. If any of the operand, that is any of the coefficient is 0, um, a product of the coefficient will result in 0. So it prints the output as invalid input. Okay. This is how your program works. This is a simple program. Simple LC flutter construct we have used. Hope you have understood. Have you all followed? Yeah.